everyone today i want to discuss with you one of the very important paper that has been published just now in 2021 uh, technological forecasting and social change that is in 2021 and this paper is the title of this paper is cbsem versus plhsem methods for research in social sciences and technology forecasting and uh, author of uh, this paper is ganesh das and uh, professor justin paul and uh, i just want to share with you this paper i feel it's very interesting those people have this kind of confusion what is the difference between cv sem and pls sem and in this paper we will define what is the difference between cv sem and pls sem so let's begin this uh, research paper and uh, basically uh, in this paper uh, they have proven in the conclusion uh, what is better whether this one is the pls sem is better or this one is cv sem is good so i just want to share with you those people they do not have idea about how we have to apply sem also what is path analysis and uh, how we have to interpret the results that part also define very well so uh, here is the first approach is based on covariance and the second one is based on variance partial least square so that means in this paper in this abstract they have clearly defined a uh, cv sem approach it is based on covariance and uh, next one is the pls sem this approach is based on variance uh, the uh, very 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 important difference in between both these kind of softwares and uh, it is also found that average variance extracted ave and composite reliability values are higher in the pls sem method and indicating better construct reliability and validity that means it said uh, in pls sem there is the better construct reliability and validity and cv sem models are better for factor based models like ours whereas composite based models provide excellent outcomes in pls sem so i'm sure it is clear uh, these are the outcomes of this paper uh, cv sem model is better for factor based models but when you have composite based model so you should apply pls sem so i'm sure those are the researchers they should uh, definitely read this paper if they want to compare both these kinds of software it would be very helpful to each and every one so let's begin this is the part of the introduction you can see here right and uh, all the very very important here at all uh, 2017 all the references are properly mentioned and after that here is the uh, the pls approach has become quite popular among researchers due to its variance based relationship rather than covariance because whenever we are going to apply covariance so we can we we can apply structure equation modeling cb based cb sem and but when we have this one is the only variance based approach so we have to apply pls a pls sem smart pls you can apply and after that you can see here this is the well defined paper and uh, here is you can see second section after this first section that is the introduction uh, the purpose of this paper in a, they have defined here uh, this paper is to compare both approaches based on various parameters and to provide a possible solution to the dilemma and uh, obviously because i have gone through this entire paper so i have uh, this clarity whether uh, where we are going to apply cb sem where we are going to apply pls sem then the second section of this paper that is focused on the scope of the paper and you can see here is then the first part the third one is sem characteristics so sem measurement model and path analysis we know sem is divided into two parts one is measurement model another one is the path analysis so this one is the uh, measurement model and now we can see on this right hand side then this part is the path analysis and after that you can see here statistics and 
fit indices in SEM. So now you can see here, this one is the fit indices. We know, we understand, we are judging all these uh, models with the help of these indices, whether the some are goodness of fit and some are badness of fit. And the chi-square test, when we talk about this one is the chi-square and overall model fit is assessed by chi-square value, we know. And uh, where is how we have to take decision? So chi-square upon the degree of freedom uh, that we are calling it CVN divided by DF, value of three, in some cases, even up to five or less is considered a good model fit measures. As we know, if R value, semen divided by DF, degree of freedom, if this value is three, that is a good or lower than less than three, that is very good as a good model fit, but it is acceptable up to five. Then the second one is uh, goodness of fit statistics like GFI and in this range from zero to one and usually the widely recommended threshold is 0 0.90 but the small samples and lower factors loading it should be more than 0 0.95 so if your values are you you people are getting values above this or like this so i'm sure your model is good and the next one is the adjusted goodness of fit statistics agfi and here is it is also ranged from 0 to 1 and usually the widely recommended threshold is what is the threshold value 0 0.90 Next one is the root mean square error of approximation, RMCA. Right, RMCA, that is badness of it. It should be closer to zero rather than closer to one. So there is properly mentioned, thus a good model for should have an RMCA value of 0 0.07 or less. At maximum, you, it would be acceptable and proper references given. And uh, after that, RMSR, root mean square residuals, it should be closer to zero for a better model fit. And it's closely linked to the number of levels in the items of a questionnaire. If the number vary, one item with five level and another with seven level, it becomes difficult to calculate. It means Let's say you having a number of the a number of the factors. Let's say one factors you had measured at one to five, but another factor you had measured at one to seven. So it would be find out that could be very difficult to calculate all these values. So this one is the standardized RMSR also, right? And a value of up to 0 0.808 is also considered acceptable. And the non-fit index NFI, when we talk about NFI, and this one is also, this index evaluated the model by comparing the chi-square value of this model and the same null model or independence model. And the non-normed fit index and then NNFI, CFI, as well as RFI, there's a parsimonious fit measures also. That is also parsimonious goodness of fit index, PGFI, and the parsimonious normed fit index, PNFI, were introduced to penalize the complexity of of the model. So that would also we have to consider. And here is proper, uh, this one is the table already given, three types of model fits and level of acceptance. Here is, you can see absolute fit measures, incremental fit measures and parsimonious fit measures. How, what could be the, uh, you can see here Tucker-Lewis uh, index TLI, that should be greater than 0 0.90. I mean, all these values, so you can refer this table also. And the, the process of SAM here is properly defined how you have to apply SAM. So those are the steps involved in the process of SAM, individual constructs, right? Those are the constructs you had created, right? And uh, preparing for CFA, after that, you are going for uh, this uh, confirmatory factor analysis, then running CFA, right? So reliability is average variance extracted. Again, it should be more than 0 0.5 for each construct because after running the CFA, we have to check all the validity, reliability as well as validity. It is properly mentioned over here. And uh, all Naresh Malhotra and here, all these references are, uh, are already given here. Then after that, the fourth step is a structure modeling. Uh, once all these validity, this part is clear, then after that, we are going to apply structural modeling. And uh, you can see structural modeling. This one is the 
uh, here is in the last one is the last step is after that you're going to write findings so finally based on the findings out the model various conclusion as per the objectives can be drawn you are going to prove your hypothesis also each and everything then the same different types you can see here cb sam versus pls stem this is the uh, the main part that uh, where is i just want to focus what is the difference between CBSEM and PLSM? So, EMOS is a tool based on covariance, right? Whereas, Smart PLS is based on partial least square variance, or we can call it regression. You have seen, because I would like to show you the model, both the models are available here. And I would show you where is the, we talk about the covariance and variance, what is the meaning of these two words over here. And then is the, we come to the, if the research objective is theory testing, and confirmation, then the appropriate method is CBSAM. And in contrast, if the research objective is prediction and theory development, then the appropriate method is PLSM. You understand where we have theory, right? Let's say we want to testing this theory. So on confirmation, then we will apply CBSAM. But uh, on the on the on the contrary side, if we we want to objective is prediction and we want to predict something and uh, theory development so then we are going to apply plsm and amos is more stringent compared to smart pls if formal theory and the appropriate sample size are not available spls can work but amos does not give a proper model fit so both the methods are complementary not competitive so after this uh, this is the PLSM and PLSC SAM also, right? And um, uh, I had uh, find out after reading this paper, uh, results of PLSC SAM and CV SAM are more closer to each other as comparatively to the PLS SAM and CV SAM. Then we come to the here is you can see Amos is the uh, working on the maximum likelihood and smart PLS consistent method provides almost similar results, right? As I said earlier. And after that, we can see here literature synthesis and empirical evidences. So they have taken, these are the constructs name, I mean, latent variables, brand in identity and customer satisfaction, right? There is the one hypothesis has been created. Brand identity has a positive and significant impact on consumer satisfaction. Second hypothesis that is customer satisfaction has a positive and significant impact on purchase intention. Third one is the brand identity and brand image. So this is the one of the hypothesis. Brand identity has a positive and significant impact on brand image. And uh, brand identity and uh, purchase intention, you can see fourth hypothesis that is clearly defined here. Brand identity has a positive and significant impact on purchase intention. And the fifth one is you can see here, customer satisfaction mediates the relationship between brand identity and purchase intention. So customer satisfaction, it is uh, playing a mediator role here in this model. And methodology, you can see this is the proposed model, brand identity and purchase intention. And here is the customer satisfaction that is the mediator. And this one is the brand image. That is the simple conceptual model. And after that, uh, first of all, they have run CBSAM, AMOS, and after that, they have run PLSM, right? And uh, how then they are comparing both these results. And I really appreciate this paper. It's a very beautifully defined each and everything. And within a simple statement, simple language, so we can cite these papers also, this paper also. So loading of variables, first the then loading against the indicators were compared. All the items have a loading of more than 0 0.6. And uh, you can see this one is the output of the, we can see here, this one is the output of the CBSAM based, right? And uh, all the results are good. We can see here all the loadings are good. All loadings are above 0.7. All the loadings are above 0.7. I'm sure this one is the 0.68, right? Very good result. And this one is the PLSM based result, right? And uh, now this is the PLS algorithm SAM. And this one is the SAM consistent PLS algorithm PLSC. And now you can see here, it was clear that the item loading are usually higher 
in higher in PLS SAM and CV SAM. And the range of the loadings between highest and lowest under one construct was lower in PLS SAM compared to CV SAM. And PLS method provides a more consistent item loading than boosts the reliability and validity of the factors. So now you can see here all the relationships among the constructs, then factor validity and reliability properly defined here, right? We can see here, these are the relationship among the constructs and uh, all the hypotheses, I think these are acceptable in this model. You can see here, uh, factor validity and reliability is properly defined over here. Model fit indices already given here. And after that mediation and moderation interaction, that is model fit indices that is already given here. And after that, you can see here, here is the, in the general discussion, if we talk about general discussion, uh, here is uh, however PLS found strong support from many researchers, right? And uh, here is further to be specific if the researcher's primary objective is to estimate a factor-based model, CBSM is the preferred one, and uh, to estimate composite-based model, PLSM should be considered. So I think this one is the clarity we have got through this paper. And uh, here is the studies conclude that PLSM retain more measurement items under the construct than CBSM. And here is the PLSM can be used for prediction and explanation, whereas CBSM is limited to explanation. And the most significant advantage of PLSM is that both formative and reflective measurement models can be specified with it. You understand? In PLSM, we can run both kind of formative as well as reflective measurement models, but in we have constraint, constraint in CBSM only, we can run no formative, only reflective measurement models we can run. So it can handle non-metric data. And as well as if we talk about this one is the a new alternative approach to CFA was proposed known as confirmatory composite analysis, CCA, right? That is the latest reference here at all. And this one is the 2020. And here is the latest literature. It can be said that PLSM provides more flexibility to explore and experiment with numerous configuration. And uh, then we come to the section number, this one is the 7.1, where is the improving model fit in SEM. Checking the factors loading of the indicators on the latent variable is the first choice. The items with factor loading less than 0 0.6 can be dropped. We know because uh, that is already defined earlier also. If uh, any, any, any variable is not giving factor loading is uh, less than 0 0.6. So we have to, we must drop this uh, particular um, uh, variable from our model. So our results can be improved. And this uh, here is, you can see this problem can be solved by using modification index indices to check the high level. And MI that we are using when we are going to connect. So there are also two ways. One, first one of the redundant items can be dropped or second is both the indicators error terms can be used as free parameter using covariance. So we will connect uh, both these uh, error terms through one covariance, covariance arrow. And after that, limitations and future research, years of code that is there is the lot of scope. Uh, you can write paper on these kind of topics. It has already defined properly here. And uh, we can see in addition, PLS quickly estimates the cause and effect relationship. That means complex relationship easily can be calculated with the help of the PLS sim. So I would uh, prefer, I would uh, recommend also to, to, to each and everyone here is in this study, author have used IBM SPSS AMOS version 24 and smart PLS 3.3.3. So that would be recommended. You should go through this paper and uh, then all your concepts will be clear where we are going to apply PLSM, where we are going to apply CBSM, which are giving better results. So I'm sure this video would be helpful. Thank you and uh, keep watching.